Hi, this is Atish from Kunya Institute of IAS Examination. So recently you might have come across this news where government is missing out on the disinvestment target for the financial year 23-24. So we'll try to understand what disinvestment is and what are the benefits and cons revolving around it. So disinvestment basically refers to the process of selling or liquidation of the assets by the government from the state owned public sector enterprises or the projects or any other fixed assets. So there are three approaches related to disinvestment. Firstly, it's minor disinvestment wherein government keeps 51% of its share and holds the control of the company. Secondly, it is major disinvestment wherein the government lets go of the control of the company to the private entity by selling more than 50% of the share and thirdly it is complete privatization where government gives the 100% share to the private entity. The disinvestment was first brought in India during the 91-92 LPG reforms and then later the Rangarajan committee in 93 also emphasized on the substantial disinvestment and later in 2001 there was a separate ministry of disinvestment that was set up and which was later merged with Ministry of Finance as a separate department and then this department was later renamed as Department of Investment and Public Asset Management which we all know as DPM. and it has been the nodal ministry since 2016. So let's now try to understand what are the benefits from disinvestment. Firstly, it helps the government with the money. So the money which is otherwise spent on the PSU can now be diverted into the social or developmental sector programs and then secondly from long term point of view it will boost country's economy that is by reducing the government's debt liability to a huge extent and thirdly it encourages private ownership as you all know how private companies work that is more efficiency more profit so eventually it will boost the country's economy as you are all aware about the transaction between Hindustan Zinc and the Vedanta wherein Vedanta acquired the major share and now it has managed to pull off a hundred fold profit from it. So that is a significant example from a disinvestment point of view and fourthly it releases a huge chunk of the public resource. So the resources otherwise deployed on the PSUs can now be diverted into more high priority social sectors. So now let's try to understand about the criticism of disinvestment. Firstly, it can create loss of payment to the government that is government might lose out on the dividends that they receive from the profit making PSUs. And secondly, it can create private monopolies instead of public monopolies as we have seen in the case of VPCL being sold to Tata and also IPCL being sold to Reliance. And then we have few criticisms related to the current disinvestment policy. Few of them claim that it is very vague, there is no clear classification between the strategic sectors and non-strategic sectors. For example, if India is to disinvest in the oil sector, then it may have a potential to threaten the energy sector of India. And then we few critics claim that the current disinvestment policy is a faulty model that the government is using the money to bridge the fiscal deficit. So to sum it up, disinvestment should not be used as a short term measure but instead it should be used as a long term measure to improve the production of goods and services in India and regarding government falling short on achieving the disinvestment target for this FY, it may be possibly due to the general elections coming up and government trying not to create more criticisms at this crucial point of time. We still have one and a half more month to go to finish this financial year so let's wait and see how things roll so thank you i hope this video was very informative to you stay tuned for more videos thank you